So I'm going to talk about simultaneous amplification, uh, the case of non-attractive zero knowledge. And this is joint work with uh, Vipul and Amit. Uh, so in this work, as you can guess from the title, uh, we just consider a very basic question. And the question is that, suppose I give you a non-interactive zero knowledge scheme, which is not fully secure, uh, by which I mean that it, it doesn't have uh, full soundness and full zero knowledge property. Can we construct an ISIC um, argument system which, is, uh, uh, which satisfies full security? So let me define the problem formally and uh, show you how we do it. So uh, let's recall what non-interactive zero knowledge is. Uh, in non-interactive zero knowledge uh, argument system, there is a trusted party which outputs uh, a common reference or a random string as you will. And then uh, any prover can take uh, an instance uh, and a witness uh, for that instance along with the random string and output a proof to convince a verifier of this fact. And uh, it has two security notions associated with it. Uh, the first security notion is the soundness notion which ref uh, is associated with the following experiment. Uh, the experiment is that the trusted party uh, gives out a CRS uh, randomly, and then uh, there's a malicious prover, which is, think of it as a polynomial time malicious prover, who wants to convince uh, the verifier of an incorrect state, uh, in a, um, uh, a statement which is not true, uh, with a proof that verifies corresponding to that CRS. And we say that um, an ISIC argument system is uh, delta S sound, if, um, if uh, the maximum probability with which this um, malicious prover can convince the verifier of uh, such a false proof is bounded by the delta S. And I will refer to this delta S throughout the talk. Uh, delta S uh, is, I will refer to as the soundness error. Uh, likewise, there is also the zero knowledge property in which uh, there is a simulator. Uh, I will denote it with Mysterio. And uh, what it does, it, it takes an instance X and it can fake a CRS and a proof uh, and gives it out to the verifier and then verifier can verify uh, this fake CRS and the proof. Uh, and the zero knowledge properties say roughly this, um, for any polynomial time verifier, uh, any cheating verifier, uh, it holds that the probability with which um, it can distinguish between uh, a fake proof and the CRS generated by the simulator uh, with an honest proof and the proof. Um, this is bounded by probability delta Z. And I will refer to this um, uh, delta Z as the zero knowledge error. Uh, okay, so now let me uh, try and uh, discuss uh, the relation between these two parameters. So if you look at uh, standard NISIC arguments, uh, we have this property satisfied. Uh, uh, so take your favorite NISIC argument uh, that you know from LWE or bilinear maps or uh, even trapdoor permutations. It holds that delta S plus delta Z uh, is negligible because they are fully secure. On the other extreme, uh, there's a setting which you can construct trivially, and that setting is when delta S plus delta Z is equal to one. Um, and this is because uh, I can give you two particular examples. Let's just take delta S zero and delta Z one. This you can easily construct by having the prover always output witness in the clear. So there, uh, um, because it's, it's outputting witness in the clear, uh, there is no soundness loss. And you can't expect zero knowledge because the witness is revealed. And uh, there's a complementary condition when delta S is one and delta Z is zero. In this case also, it's uh, very easy to construct an ISIC argument by just having the prover output uh, zero and having the verifier always accept zero as the valid proof. All right, um, so what we do in this work, we show that uh, let's take a setting which is very slightly non-trivial. We just uh, have delta S plus delta Z, uh, a little bit less than one. Uh, let's say it's one minus epsilon for an arbitrary small constant epsilon. And then if you're willing to assume public key encryption and with some exponential security, uh, what we can show is that such a NISIC is enough to imply a fully secure NISIC. And along the way, we also um, introduce a new object, uh, which we call as secret sharing for NP instances. And I will uh, talk about it later uh, through, uh, in, the, in the talk. So uh, let's just, uh, so first I will describe how the overall approach of this work. So what we do is we, uh, we define two transformations and uh, somehow use those transformations one after another. Um, to start off with a weak NISIC to a fully secure NISIC. So the first transformation is a soundness amplifying transformation. 
And the goal of this transformation is to, um, in, to, to improve the soundness of the, uh, of the NISIC. So it takes a delta S delta Z NISIC with um, sub, and assumes sub-exponential PK. And it, increase, uh, it improves the soundness from delta S to delta S to the N, whereas N, N is uh, any polynomial parameter of your choice. Um, so it, it improves the soundness. However, what we show is that it doesn't kill the zero knowledge property completely. We show that it goes from uh, delta Z to this parameter that I've written, one minus one minus delta Z to the N. Uh, don't worry about this at the moment, but uh, this is what it does. The second transformation is the zero knowledge amplifying transformation. Its job is to improve the zero knowledge property and we show that analogous uh, to the soundness amplifying transformation, it uh, improves the zero knowledge from delta Z to uh, two times delta Z to the N. So it exponentially improves the, sound, uh, the zero knowledge. And we sh also show that it doesn't kill the soundness completely. So it goes from delta S to uh, this number one minus one minus delta S to the N. Okay, so now let's uh, see why uh, these two transformations are enough. Um, and so the, uh, the reason is, wait, are we missing a slide? Yeah, so the reason is that um, um, you can use these two transformation one after another to construct something secure. So let me uh, not um, bore you with the general theorem, let me just give you a concrete example. So let's say you have delta S as 0 0.3 and delta Z is 0 0.6, so that um, sound S error uh, plus zero knowledge error is actually quite large, it's 0.9. So in this setting, what you can do is first apply the soundness amplification with this uh, parameter um, log lambda and what you get is something like this. Don't worry about the calculations. Uh, these parameters are correct, but you get something. And then uh, you, you use this NISIC and apply the zero knowledge amplification with this parameter. And what you get is uh, uh, something constant and negligible. Um, finally, you can just also um, do the soundness amplification again to get something uh, fully secure. So this is why these two transformations are enough uh, for our purpose. All right, so let's, let's now look at these two transformations. The first transformation is the soundness amplification. And uh, as you already know, um, how do you increase soundness? You just repeat, and re repeat it in parallel. And this has been studied in uh, many, many works um, um, historically. So what we do is that we have um, we just have some parameter n and have the CRS generation be just uh, sampling n independent copies of uh, the CRS using your underlying NISIC. And then uh, if you want to prove a statement x, then what you do is using each copy of the CRS, you generate an independent copy of the proof for the same statement x. And that's it, that's your proof. So we know this uh, time and again that this imp improves soundness. So this is uh, the latest version of the soundness amplification which directly applies to uh, parallel repetition and this was due to Kennedy, Halevi and Steiner. Uh, who, um, and we also reprove in a, in this in our paper. Uh, what they showed is that suppose you have a NISIC argument system which is uh, say delta S sound and the soundness holds against some adversaries uh, of size S. Then when you repeat it in parallel with the uh, N repetitions, then what you get at the end is something like delta S to the N plus a small addit additive factor, uh, an epsilon, uh, and it holds again the adversaries of slightly smaller size, which is O tilde of S epsilon. And uh, I'm hiding some factors in O tilde, but they are not important. So let me repeat again. Uh, what it does is it takes delta S uh, sound um, uh, argument, which holds uh, against adversity of sizes. What we get is, what ideally we would expect is delta S to the N, but we don't quite get that. We get delta S to the N plus um, some additive factor, N epsilon, which also factors in the reduction of the size uh, for which, uh, against the class of adversaries, which the resulting system holds soundness against. And further, uh, in this work, we show that if you are willing to assume public encryption, then uh, even the adaptive soundness is conserved. Uh, so this was uh, soundness amplification, and uh, this, uh, we already know how to deal with it. Let's now focus on the zero knowledge amplification part. This is new to our work. Um, so in zero knowledge, one first, the first idea that comes to mind, and, uh, which I would show is wrong, is the following. Uh, suppose you want to uh, 
incre uh, increase zero large property, what you would think is let's just compose one proof with another. So uh, let, let's have the um, CRS be two independent uh, uh, sampled uh, CRS of the underlying NISIC. And let's prove uh, X is in L using the inner, uh, this X um, using the CRS1. And then uh, you can use CRS2 to prove that this uh, proof that you generated is valid and you will output pi 2. So that's, that's the idea. However, um, you, would, you would expect that the, this should in, increase the knowledge because suppose inner one is uh, delta z secure, then on composition you would think that you should get something like delta z square. But what we show is that this in, intuition is completely flawed. In fact, uh, there's a very simple counterexample uh, to this fact. And this counterexample is the following. So suppose you want to build a, um, uh, a NISIC, uh, so counterexample, let's just start with a secure uh, NISIC, and then we build the counterexample as follows. So the CRS generation for this uh, counterexample is just the CRS for the underlying secure NISIC. And then uh, in order to prove a statement, if your statement has some spe specific structure, let's say it is bought appended with some string, in that case you just output the witness in the clear along with this uh, statement. Uh, otherwise, you just sample a bit B. If B shows up one, uh, then you output the proof honestly, generating the, uh, uh, using, the uh, uh, using the underlying NISIC argument honestly. Otherwise, if B is equal to zero, you just uh, format the string with bot and output it along with the witness. So uh, don't have to worry about uh, too much about the detail, but uh, the point I'm trying to make is if you use such, a, such an argument, then um, there's no hope to increase soundness beyond one half. Uh, and, and there's no hope to increase your knowledge beyond one half, because with some half probability, it clearly leaks the witness. So uh, we need to uh, develop new technology in order to handle this issue, and what we do is we, uh, we define something called as verifiable sharing for instances, and here the goal is that, suppose you have an inst NP instance and a witness, uh, you will secret share it in, uh, into an instant witnesses pair. Um, so XW is the instance witness, uh, and you, you will get shares X1, W1 through X and WN, such that there are two security properties that are satisfied. The first security property is that uh, if uh, x1 through xn are adverse, like an adversi adversarial sharing of x, uh, and they happen to be in the language, then uh, x should also be in the language. So this, hap this holds with respect to adversarial sharing uh, of, uh, of x, w. And the second property is that if x1 and xn uh, were honestly generated shares, and I happen to just le uh, leak out n minus one witnesses, then uh, th those witnesses should not leak any information about the membership of X. Um, we can uh, actually construct it in a not very difficult manner. Uh, uh, there is this uh, thing called MPC in the head, uh, which was uh, proposed by Ishai, Kushilevitz, Ostrovsky, and Zahai. And then we can instantiate it uh, uh, for semi-honest MPC protocols with perfect correctness. So this, um, in a very non non not so indirect manner, gives you this notion. And uh, you can use public key encryption to implement commitments for this. Um, so I would refer you to the paper for construction. So now, uh, once you have the sharing, the zero knowledge amplification um, question is very simple. What you do is just uh, have independent copies of CRSs as a part of the CRS. Uh, have this public key as uh, the setup, at the setup for generating commitments. And then you, uh, to generate a proof, you just secret share your X and uh, witness to generate shares. And then uh, for each XI, you will use the CRSI to generate the proof I, and uh, that's it, that's the output of the zero knowledge uh, amplification, uh, the compiled version of the, uh, the argument. So now uh, let's now look at this transformation. Um, in zero knowledge amplification case, uh, we have, we can prove the following thing about the soundness. We prove that the soundness is not completely killed and we show that, suppose we have uh, a delta S uh, sound uh, arg uh, uh, argument system, uh, which happens to be against adversity of size S, then uh, when you use this um, transformation, then uh, you, what we can get is something like one minus one minus delta Z, delta S to the N, plus uh, order of epsilon sound against 
uh, adversary of slightly smaller size, that is S times epsilon. Again, the same phenomena happens here. Uh, we st started with delta S, and we would expect 1 minus 1 minus delta S to the n, but we don't quite get that. We get an additive term, which also factors in the reduction of the size of the adversary. Um, yeah, so this is the main theorem for zero knowledge uh, amplification. And what we show is uh, if we started with delta Z zero knowledge, uh, assuming public key encryption, which is sub exponential secure, what we get is two times delta Z to the n um, plus uh, order n epsilon uh, zero knowledge property against uh, circuits of slightly smaller size. And uh, the two the term here comes just because we first argue witness indistinguishability and then we argue the zero knowledge. So there's a factor of two loss there. Um, all right. So let's now look at the uh, how do you argue soundness uh, theorems in both the, the, both the cases. And the idea was uh, present even before our work. Uh, this is this notion of verifiable, uh, weakly verifiable puzzles. And uh, I won't talk about it in detail. Uh, you can look at the our paper or, or also the Kennedy Halevi Steiner paper. Let's now look at how do you argue zero knowledge theorems. So for arguing zero knowledge theorem, we actually need to uh, rely on this machinery called hardcore sets. And we rely on this uh, very beautiful theorem by Modern Tesaro, uh, who proved an indistinguishability version of this hardcore set theorem. And uh, it's on the next slide. So uh, it looks scary, but actually it's, uh, what it says is quite simple. Uh, what it says is that, suppose I have two functions E and F which are uh, gamma indistinguishable, uh, by gamma I mean uh, this, this probability is uh, gamma, to any adversary of size s. Uh, whenever x and y are sam sampled randomly, suppose I have uh, e, e of x and f of y are gamma indistinguishable, then what you can do is finds, find sets s0 and s1, which have high enough density, like 1 minus gamma, such that when you sample randomness from s0 and s1, then E and F become epsilon indistinguishable for adversaries of slightly smaller size, which is S times epsilon squared. Let me repeat myself. Uh, what this theorem says is that if um, uh, you have two functions E and F, which are gamma indistinguishable against some class of adversary of size S, where X and Y were randomly chosen, then there exist uh, two sets S0 and S1 uh, of density 1 minus gamma one, uh, at least such that when you sample uh, from them, e and, e and F now suddenly become epsilon indistinguishable, uh, where it, uh, this indistinguishability holds against adversary of slightly smaller size. So now by choosing this epsilon appropriately, you can set, the, you can choose the, this advantage uh, appropriately. So this is a very powerful theorem, and it's used in almost all amplification results. Um, so here is our zero knowledge amplification strategy. Unfortunately, I won't have com uh, full time to talk about like uh, the complete details, but here is the first idea. Um, uh, so the basic idea is consider a mental experiment where you are sampling a uniform string. So as I told you, the, uh, uh, for NISIC, since it's delta Z zero knowledge, it has a hardcore set or a good set of density one minus delta. So a uniform uh, string will lie in the hardcore set with probability 1 minus delta z, and it will uh, lie in the complement otherwise. Um, and so we can actually use this property to construct a hybrid like, uh, like this. So what you do is you sample, a string, uh, you sample a string like this, such that 1 is set with probability 1 minus delta z, and uh, 0 is sampled with probability uh, just delta z. So now when you get a 1, you, some, some, uh, you generate CRS1 and the proof uh, 1 um, from the hardcore set. Otherwise, if you get a 0, you generate it from the complement of the hardcore set. And remember, uh, when you are in the hardcore set, you can switch this part to a simulated proof. And your goal would be to somehow uh, simulate at least one of the indices, so that now you can um, get rid of one of the witnesses for one of the XIs. And then it will become uh, the hybrid will become independent of the witness, and uh, and that that will allow you uh, allow you to uh, argue security. However, uh, this is a simplified approach. Uh, this uh, as is cannot work, and the reason behind is um, is the following. Um, the reason is that if you look at these sets hardcore sets, they are extremely inefficient to sample from. 
and they are very com they have very complex descriptions uh, and so if you sample from them, you can actually completely break the security of the secret sharing scheme. Um, so it seems like we are in uh, some trouble, um, but fortunately, uh, what we have at our disposal is that the sets have very high density. And so if it's like uh, one minus uh, delta Z dense, where delta Z is like one over poly, then uh, it has high density and then and then it doesn't leak too much information about, uh, um, uh, about the secret sharing scheme. So we can formalize this argument using um, an idea which was, uh, which was also there in, the, in my work with uh, Prabhanjan and Amit on, uh, on, on IO. And we use uh, those ideas here to f uh, formalize a way to efficiently sample from hardcore sets. And I will uh, in, uh, refer you to the paper for details. And with, uh, with this, finally, let me uh, conclude with um, some open questions. So first, uh, can, is it possible to get rid of uh, public key encryption to get an unconditional result? Uh, the second question is, uh, can we c uh, construct this amplification with better parameters? So right now, we have this, um, uh, the, the, our compiler is not very efficient. Uh, also, there is another. Uh, annoying uh, thing that is we can only handle when delta s plus delta z is one minus some constant. Can we go all the way to one minus uh, one by security parameter? And finally, uh, another interesting direction is uh, can we study simultaneous amplification for other cryptographic primitives? Uh, with this, uh, I would like to conclude and uh, please ask me questions. Thank you, Ayush. Do we have any questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Ayush again.